2008 Lexus IS250 rear struts replacement. I'm Brian Essen from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you through that process. So to get started, we need to get this vehicle in the air. And if you're doing this at home, um, use floor jacks and jack stands and jack it up as high as you can in the rear of the car. And you wanna make sure that the suspension is free to float and hang. You don't wanna put anything underneath and like jack it up from underneath the suspension. So after you get the car jacked up, go ahead and remove the sway bar link in. So you're gonna remove this um, 12 millimeter bolt and it, it goes all the way through the arm. So you're gonna take the bolt out. Then after that, you're gonna remove the 19 millimeter bolt and nut that's on the backside and go ahead and remove that. So as we're removing the sway bar bolt and the bolts that went through the uh, bottom of the strut and the arm will move a little bit when you pop it out, that's okay. Now what you wanna do is uh, take the 19 millimeter bolt, bolt and nut here so go ahead and remove these the bolt and nut off now that you've got the bolt out here you can go ahead and loosen the bolt back here on the uh and then the whole arm will swing down out of your way like that yeah just loosen a couple of notches and, that, and that's it now that we got the lower control arm unbolted from the in the struts here right behind this uh this panel on the wheel wheel here is a couple more bolts we need to get to but we're, we'll get to that in a second first what we're going to do is we're going to lower the vehicle down and remove the inner trunk lining so I've already removed the trunk lining from the uh, from the passenger side of the car. And the reason why is we needed to get to the bolts to hold the strut in here. So I'm going to show you how I did that and I'll do that. So what you're going to need is a, a, a pair of these little pliers right here. And they have these every, around in a couple spots they have these clips. And so you put the pliers in there and it kind of works and it pulls the clips out. And you want to set those aside. So right here on the floor panel there's a little little thing they use for tie downs and stuff so you can use a flat blade screwdriver and pop this up this cover up and then there's a 10 millimeter bolt remove that and this whole uh, catch here will come off and set that aside so you want to pop these panels up here kind of set them aside and then there is one of these clips here on this panel that's right here so you can pop that up you don't need to take them all the way out if you don't have to just need to get them loose and then so then you're going to follow it around and uh, and if you, if you run across one of those clips you just pop the clip out and what you're going to do is just pull it out as far as you need to you don't we don't have to take this thing all the way out of the car so as you can see i just I pulled it from the bottom and kind of pulled it towards me and now you can see the bolts so what we're going to do is remove the three 14 millimeter bolts do not remove the center bolt this bolt here just remove the, th the three 14 millimeter bolts so after removing the three bolts to set them aside like that now we're going to lift the vehicle back up so now what we want to do is we want to remove these 10 millimeter bolts here or nuts here and here and what that does uh, and then we can lift this uh the inner skirt just lift it up enough and then there's going to be right behind it's going to be two 12 millimeter uh, bolts so after removing the, the, the couple tins there you can peel the uh, cover back up just high enough where you can get to the bolt and uh, take the two 12s out there and when you go to take the last 12 out you want to make sure you got a hand on the spring here and because it's going to fall so you want to catch it and then uh, and then you can just maneuver it out between your brake line here and maneuver it out of the car so I wanted to show you the part numbers for the rear struts. These are genuine uh, Toyota Lexus um, parts. And they're the same parts left and right. So now you want to put your rig your spring into your spring compressor. And if you don't have one of these, you could take this, this part of the strut assembly down and your new parts down to a repair shop and then have them press it, uh, compress the spring and then uh, transfer over the new uh, strut to the uh, to the spring so basically all you're going to get in the new parts is the is the strut itself and the, and the bushings that comes with and you're going to reuse the spring and the and the this little part of the uh, strut here that's kind of like an extension so you need to transfer those parts over and if you don't have the, a spring compressor like this it's very it can be a very dangerous job if you don't have the right tools so I would recommend you take it to a shop and, ha and have them swap it over for you. And they'll charge you a small little fee, but uh, it's worth it. So for those that are doing it at the shop, go ahead and rig it into your, your spring machine, you know, center it, center it as best you can. Rotate it in a way where the, uh, so all the ears will fit in between. 
So now you can screw your uh, your strut compressor down so the spring compresses just enough where the uh, where you got just enough play like that. You don't need to soup like compress it all the way. Um, and also, I recommend you follow all safety uh, pro protocols on your whatever tool you're using for doing this. So once you got it, uh, the spring compressed. Um, one other thing you could do is you could also you can kind of make a mark on the bottom here if you like, uh, and you want the strut to go back into the same way so you don't want to twist it and whatever. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it only goes in one way, like like it has a little catch here. But some people like to make marks just to uh, to be you know double check their work or whatever. So once you got it compressed enough where you can move the spring like this. And uh, you can go ahead and remove the center nut. So once the old strut comes out, we need to transfer over a few more parts. So you got this rubber pad here on the bottom. We need to transfer that over to the new one. And then we need to transfer this bump stock. So it just slides off like that. And it'll slide onto the new one. So after transferring over our bump stock and putting it back into the little groove like that, or the spring pad, then the bump stock. Next, we're gonna uh, transfer over the uh, the rubber uh, grommet with the, with the uh, um, metal guide in it. So you'll put that in like that. And then uh, we're gonna take our old rubber grommet and washer from the top here, remove it, and put the new rubber grommet in and reuse the washer. Then you'll slide your strut up there and um, up into the spring and put your bushings on and your washer on and start your nut. And now you can go ahead and tighten this nut. I use my impact gun and I run it down until you can hear the difference when it bottoms out and fully seats. And uh, so once that's tight, now what you're gonna do is make sure that your spring is sitting in the, in, the, in the pocket where it's supposed to go. And if it's not, twist it or whatever to where it's lined up right. And now you can release the pressure of the spring by spinning the handle off. So now that we got our springs and everything transferred over, now we need to reassemble this back into the uh, car. So what we're going to do is make our little ears here on the on the down below here, um, kind of put them in the angle we want, and we're going to stab these three studs through the uh, through the top of the, uh, the strut tower there in the inside. And then what we'll do is we'll start the bolts that go through here, the two 12 millimeters. We'll just start them. We will not, we'll just start them, but not tighten them down. Once you got the strut stab back in there and you got these two bolts started, you want it loose because what we're going to do is lower the vehicle down and tighten it and put the nuts on the top and tighten those three nuts down first. And because this has a little bit of adjustment up and down, so we want to tighten and secure those bolts first. If you take both sides apart now, is if you put them both in there and start you know the left and right side with the 12s and stuff and then lower it down um, that's what I'm gonna do right now so I'm gonna go ahead and install the uh, the opposite side too and then I'll lower it down and um, I'll start all four of the or all three of the nuts that go on the top and I'll tighten it down and now then while I'm already in there I'll go ahead and just button up the panel so now I got them stabbed I'm gonna go ahead and, and tighten up these three bolts and the three bolts the same ones on the opposite side over here Go ahead and tighten those all up and uh, once those are tightened then you can take this the shields or the, the linings here and put them back into place and put them back in so when you go to tuck these panels back in you can they're pretty flexible so you can move them around but you want to make sure like see how that has a groove it tucks in behind under uh, behind this panel the back panel so you want to make sure it all gets in there and it, and it looks nice and flush like that so just take your time and put them all in there. And once you get them all in there, then you can start all your clips. So after getting your uh, your trunk linings all back into place and, the, and all the clips pushed back in, uh, then you can go ahead and mount, remount your little um, your little tabs for 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 hold your hold down tabs. So now that the trunk is all back together, our floor is back in. All of our our hold downs are bolted back up. You're pretty much done with the trunk part. You can go ahead and close that up. Now we can go ahead and tighten the two bolts on the sides of the uh, of the strut here, and then put our, our cover back on and, and put the 10 millimeters back on after we're done with that. So now what I did was I took my lower arm and swung it back up, and I started the sway bar. I put the bolt through the sway bar. It's loose right now. I just put the bolt through and the nut on the other side, 
to pull the strut into place and slide the nut through the um, through the strut in the lower control arm and go ahead and start the bolt on the other side leave it loose too now what you got to do to get the the, um, the spindle here to go through the lower control arm is you need a, a pry bar you need to put it over the top and hook it on the uh, on the upper control arm and hook it on like a bolt or something on the inside and now you can take the take it and pry down and when you pry pry down like that you can also pry outwards a little bit in this little this little heim joint here is move, movable so you can kind of maneuver it in a way and line up your bolt and start your bolt through so as you can see this is maneuverable so to help you line it up so it just kind of manipulate it in the kind of the area where you want it and then pry like i said pry down on the arm until it lines up so to get this bolt to really line up i what i had to do is, is i use my large pry bar like this pry it down like i showed you and then i had to put a pry bar here and kind of pry the uh the bottom of the spindle into place and then i had one of my co-workers start the bolt for me so now you can torque this bolt down to 118 foot pounds this one down here on the strut, you can torque that one down to 80 foot pounds. The uh, sway bar link in is at 20 foot pounds. And then the one at the uh, at the back of the uh, control arm of course, is 103 foot pounds. So after torquing all three, all the bolts down, uh, the only the last thing is to um, recommend alignment for it after doing any major repairs like this. And go ahead and put your wheels on and torque them down. and. Uh, that completes the job of replacing the rear struts on a 2008 Lexus IS250. I'm Brian Essick from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos and encourage you to subscribe. Thank you again.